For the longest time, which is probably since first grade, I have always seen myself as unprepared and stupid. First, I was held back in kindergarten. In first grade, I got yelled at all the time for things like misspelling words. I would uh, have to sit at the desk and finish all my math problems while everyone else got to run around and play on the computer. It was the exact same thing in second grade, and on top of that, I would have to stay after school with the grumpy old teacher to finish the homework assignments. From third grade to sixth grade, I would constantly have to get pulled aside to work with the special teacher. All this stuff, plus constantly forgetting my homework, not doing my homework, not really being able to pay attention or listen to class, all these things combined accumulated into my identity. All these things would feed my subconscious and enforce that identity of stupid, unprepared, lazy. Fuck up. Now you can imagine after years and years of feeling this way, you'd get a little bit fed up. I got extremely resentful and pretty much gave up on school and life altogether. I had essentially resigned to this identity that was really just created by circumstance. I just saw it as immutable. If being unprepared and stupid is an immutable character trait of mine, then yeah, no, what's the, what's the point of even trying? This mentality led to a very stupid and hedonistic lifestyle that would only lead me to feel even more empty. This idea was so deeply entrenched that even by the time I decided I wanted to change and I wanted my life to get better, I really wasn't able to escape this pattern. I would just keep falling into the same habits and routines over and over and over and over. It's what I would call the self-improvement death loop. You start for a week, continue with the trend for a week, and then you fall off for a month and then you get fed up again. You start back up, maybe you do it for two weeks this time, but fall back off, two months pass by, fed up again, start again, another week, yada, 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 etc., etc. The self-improvement death loop. I had the right intentions, but I wasn't getting to the root of the issue. Yeah, you know, back then I didn't really know all that much about self-improvement. I thought it was just about exerting as much willpower as possible indefinitely, and then your life just magically changes. I was constantly trying to change my external environment rather than my internal world. The reason my lifestyle in general was so stupid wasn't a result of who I was intrinsically, and it wasn't a result of how hard I was or was not trying. It was a result of who I believed I was. There are five major mistakes that I made when I was doing this self-improvement process, which I'll talk about later, but so what's the solution? In the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, he talks a lot about how identity change is essential when it comes to creating new habits and routines. The process he outlines is on paper very simple. One, decide the person you want to be. Two, prove it to yourself with small wins. Just as our subconscious has constantly been fed evidence of what our current identity is, so for me that's stupid, lazy, forgetful, unprepared, fuck up. Our subconscious mind has constantly been fed evidence of this current old identity through circumstances, habits, repeated patterns. We can use that same process to adopt a new identity. And it's just simply by building up evidence for this new identity. The process isn't exactly straightforward and it's probably gonna look different for everybody, but these are guidelines that I wish I had when I started this self-improvement thing all those years ago. Number one, do what you say you're gonna do. Don't say you're gonna do something unless you actually think you're gonna do the thing. 
our mind, subconscious, spirit, body, it keeps track of every time you say you're gonna do something and then don't follow through on that. The more we do this, the more we prove to our subconscious that we're not capable of changing. We are effectively casting a vote for our old identity. Number two, make one small change and stick with it. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was our identity. Trying to make a 180 degree turn in a single day is doomed to failure. If your room is a complete mess and you spend two hours one day cleaning it, how long do you think it'll be before it reverts back to its original state? I give it a week. Our rooms are a reflection of our inner world. It took way more than one day to get there and it's gonna take way more than one day to transform it. A deep clean every once in a while is easy, but learning to keep your room clean requires deep internal transformation. Number three, a temporary defeat is just that. A temporary defeat. The only difference between winners and losers is that winners don't give up. Consistency is key. Fighting isn't about how hard you can hit, but how hard you can get hit and keep getting back up. What we're trying to do is very difficult and we're going to be met with a lot of outside resistance. It's important that no matter how much doubt we feel or how crazy it is what we're trying to do may seem, that we just don't give up, despite how many times we're met with temporary defeat because it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. Every time that we are met with friction or adversity, it is an opportunity for us to prove to our subconsciouses that we have what it takes to keep going. Every time we give up, we are just compiling more evidence against ourselves and for our old identity. We're telling our subconscious that no, as a matter of fact, we aren't strong or smart enough to actually do this. Four. Surround yourself with people who genuinely want the best for you. Our environment plays a huge role in our success. Having people behind us who genuinely care about us and actually believe in what we're trying to do is a huge advantage. Though it's not a make or break, it will make the process of transforming our identity a lot smoother. On the upside, we can use the people who don't believe in us as fuel and motivation to keep going, to prove them wrong. Five, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal, not the accolades that come from success. It's easy to get caught up in the day to day and compare our situation to other people. We compare our skills, confidence, status, wealth, knowledge, whatever. The thing is, this doesn't do anything for us. What you have compared to somebody else is not an indicator of your success or lack thereof. The question is whether or not you actually won the day. Did you do everything that you said you would? Did you use your time wisely? Were you productive or busy? Because there's a difference. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're doing anything productive. Did you spend an hour or two scrolling on YouTube shorts? Did you work out today or did you skip the gym? If you did work out, did you give it your all or were you just going through the motions? Every action we take from this moment forward is either adding evidence for or against our new identity. Number six, our higher selves are on the other side of pain. When a caterpillar is born, its natural trajectory is built into its nervous system. It eats and eats and eats and eats and eats until it's ready to form a chrysalis. Like a pressure cooker, it is boiled down to its most rudimentary components and then it's rebuilt into something greater. We as humans have to go through a very similar process. Our transformation isn't as spectacular on the surface level, but it runs far deeper. In the olden days, when a boy reached a certain age, he would have to go through some sort of rite of passage. We have forms of this in our modern culture, but for the most part, it's been kind of lost throughout time. 
we have to take it upon ourselves to induce this metamorphosis process. Something that I've known for a while but wasn't really willing to accept is that metamorphosis is painful. You can't get away from it. There's no shortcuts, there's no easy way out, there's no small stepping it your way to greatness. You have to go through the fire. We have to be willing to put ourselves through a rigorous challenge, mentally, physically, and spiritually in order to induce this metamorphosis. I believe, at least for me, that I need to put myself in a position where I need to dig deep. I need to put myself in a position where I need to unlock that next version of myself. Part of the metamorphosis process is figuring out what your new identity is going to be and who your higher self is. And the thing is, you won't 100% know until you start acting. You won't 100% know until you're already halfway in. The process of finding out who you are isn't made on the sidelines and by overthinking yourself to death. It's not done by overanalyzing yourself because you're just gonna be put in a state of fear and complacency and anticipation, your anxiety. You're not going to want to step in the fire. You're just thinking about all the ways you could possibly sidestep it. So the, the only way is through. Sometimes you just have to throw yourself to the fire. That's gonna be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.